Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In the following season of tutorials, I'll dedicate myself to recreating the most well-known techniques in Touch Designer, but using the new family of operators, POPs. Also, it would be extremely interesting if you wrote in the comments which technique you'd like me to replicate using POPs. Let's begin the tutorial. Chapter 1, Overview. This simple network uses the new POPS family in Touch Designer, which has a rendering performance superior to everything we've known so far. But not only that, Derivative has also created several operators that allow us, following this new POPS logic, to do many things that previously would have required programming. This has the entire Touch Designer community super excited because it marks the beginning of a new era where we'll have more time to create rather than spending hours figuring out how to solve a particular technique. Lastly, in this tutorial series I'm launching, I'll try to cover each operator in some detail so we can gradually get familiar with the new POPs family. That said, let's begin the review. The first thing you'll see in the section called Main Network is a sphere connected to a noise, followed by a lookup to extract colors from a ramp. Since this network is very simple, don't worry, when we build the network step by step, we'll pause to explore the new operators and explain some of their functions and logic. Now, the lookup texture is connected to a GEO component, which is used to render the geometry. For those who are new to Touch Designer, I'll also explain later how that operator sequence works. For now, what's important to know is that in order to render any geometry, you must have a GEO, a camera, and a render top, which provides the final output. As for lighting, I'm using an environment light along with an HDRI image. I downloaded for free from HDRI Haven. The result? We get a sphere deformed by noise with a metallic texture because I used a PBR material with some adjusted parameters to achieve that look. That's it for the overview of this network. Let's go ahead and build it. I have great news. I've just launched a school community for individuals who want to professionalize as creative technologists without breaking the bank. Within this community, you'll discover courses for beginner, intermediate, and advanced users. Additionally, we will have masterclasses on topics like reactive audio, interactive systems, multimedia projects, LED lighting, and more. What's even more interesting is the knowledge-hungry nature of this community. Members actively share their experiences in a way that's unique compared to other platforms, providing constant feedback, interacting with one another, and even creating opportunities for study meetups. If this resonates with you, I've included a link in the description to help you firmly embark on your touch designer journey. Chapter 2, Network. The first thing we're going to create is the sphere. Open the operator menu by pressing the tab key and search within the pop family. Look for the operator called sphere and add it to the network. Use the following parameters. For the size, you can freely choose the one you prefer. I want an oval shaped sphere, so the Y axis will be larger than the other two. I'll use these values. The frequency, which refers to the number of subdivisions or points on the sphere. I'll raise to 100 to get more detail. Now connect a noise after the sphere. The first thing we need to start understanding is that the POPS family includes extra options that we're not used to. For example, the first thing we see in this noise is the option Noise Lookup Attribute. This option lets us select a specific attribute that will be manipulated by the calculations made by the noise. Now, what are attributes? Attributes in Touch Designer's POPs are data elements assigned to each point, vertex or primitive, such as position, color, or normals that determine their behavior or appearance. Each attribute has a name and type, and many are standard like P for position, N for normal, or color for color. How can we view the attributes of any operator? If you click with the middle mouse button on the sphere operator, you'll get a list of attributes, which can be modified freely thanks to this new POPs logic. In this white panel, we can see the attributes that this sphere has. For example, under the point attributes category, we see two attributes, one for the points and another for the normals. The first is listed as pfloat3, meaning it's a point attribute containing a package of three values corresponding to the XYZ coordinates. Likewise, for the normal below, it's a vertex attribute, also 
a package of three values. Now, how can we call these attributes individually or as a group? Let's go back to the noise operator. In the noise lookup parameter, we see we can call two of the three attributes from the sphere. In this case, we can access the point and normal attributes. If I select P, I'll be referencing all the XYZ positions of the sphere. From there, I can adjust the parameters of the noise operator that we already know. Copy this parameters. Here's where pops become really interesting. If you want to apply noise only to the x-axis, you can do it using attribute syntax. For example, go to the output section and look at the combine attribute scope parameter. You can use just P for all point coordinates, or use combinations like PX for only the x-axis. Pi for Y, or PayZ for Z. This way you control how and where the noise is applied. You could apply it to just P.XZ. and the results will always be different. Let's leave it as it was. Another extremely interesting feature is that compute point normals can be recalculated directly in the noise operator. The other option would be to use a normal POP. But in this exercise, we won't need it. There's also a very useful map option where we can create different mappings. I won't go into detail now since other projects are more suitable for exploring this, but basically we can clone this same sphere and use it as a reference to create more dynamic maps over our current object. In this case, I'll choose P0. To apply the map to a single coordinate and decide which parameter of the noise will be affected by this map. In this case, I'll use offset. A quick pause. If it's your first time on the channel, hi, I'm Okamarufu, and I share your obsession with Learning Touch Designer. I love this program, and I do my best to share everything I know to make learning easier for you. If you want to go even deeper, you can join nearly 3,000 people on my Patreon, where you'll get access to all my free VJ packs, complete project files, and exclusive components and plugins. I've also set up a fully organized shop with conceptual VJ packs, advanced plugins, and a lot more. Everything is neatly arranged in collections, so you can easily find exactly what you need. And if subscribing isn't your thing, no worries. You can still grab individual project files anytime, no strings attached. So if you're ready to take your visuals to the next level, create better projects and support what I do, check out my Patreon. Right now you won't see much difference, but if you start playing with the parameters of the sphere, you'll see folds begin to appear, giving us more possibilities to parameterize this surface. This already looks absolutely interesting, and we've only used two operators. That's the power of pops, and it's something we need to get used to. Perfect, now let's create color. One method that I've seen used often is through an operator called lookup texture, which takes information from a top, for example, a ramp, to apply color to the surface's texture. Let's see how to do it. Start by creating a ramp top, and set its resolution to 100 pixels wide by one pixel high. We'll keep things simple with three color stops. Choose a dark ochre tone on the left, a deep blue in the middle, and a bright white on the right. Leave the rest of the ramp settings as they are and then change the orientation to vertical. Now, above that, create a lookup texture and reference the ramp in the TOP parameter. It's quite intuitive as you'll see. Now I want lookup to use the U coordinates to apply the ramp color. To do that, just select U attribute and use P0X position to map it. Remember, colors are usually stored as float four, which means four values, red, green, blue, and alpha. Get used to monitoring attributes because the PIOPS logic is heavily based on using them. Another interesting option in lookup is the channel mask, where you can increase or decrease specific color channels. For example, if I raise the G green value a bit, 
I get a different tone. Right now, we won't see anything interesting yet because we haven't built the rendering network. To do this, connect the GEO. Create a camera. And finally, create an environment light. Then, create a PBR material and drag it inside the GEO. Also, add a movie file in operator. And load an HDRI image. You can download one for free from HDRI Haven, which is needed for the environment light. To finish and visualize everything, create a render top and set its resolution to a vertical format. And surprise, inside the render top, we now have the option to create a black background directly. No more need to use RGB key or other tricks. We can do it right here. I'm now going to adjust these settings so the render appears on my left screen. Perfect. Now that everything is ready, we just need to adjust the roughness of the PBR material. And we have the final result. I'll scale the GEO a bit so it's closer to the camera. All right, that's it. I hope this project has been interesting to you. As always, you can find the project file on my Patreon. Remember that by supporting me, you help sustain this channel so I can continue releasing better and more advanced tutorials. I recommend that even with just these few operators, you try to understand everything you can do. There's so much potential in the new Pops family. It's worth exploring, experimenting, and discovering through trial and error, the kinds of amazing creations you can make. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments.